Hey everyone, it's Jason. Welcome to another unboxing for Marvel's Villainous. So this is the first standalone expansion called Mischief and Malice. Uh, clearly you can see Loki's going to be part of this. Um, so if you're not familiar with the Villainous games, is you play as one of the villains that have the Disney versions. And then they have the Marvel ones, which are, they play the same way, but they're not directly compatible. Um... And it's, I can explain why. Um, but basically, you, know, you play as the villain, trying to complete whatever the villain's goal would be. Um, and then, occasionally, you have to draw from a fate deck. Uh, one of the other players can play a fate card against you. And they're basically then drawing the heroes um, to the counterparts of that villain to try and defeat, you know, to mess up or interrupt the hero's planning and scheming and stuff. Um, so the big difference between the Disney and Marvel is, uh, Disney is you're trying to complete whatever villain you take is trying to complete, like, whatever objective they were doing in the movie. So if, like, you're playing as Cruella, you're trying to collect Dalmatians. If you're playing as Hades, you're trying to summon the Titans. You're playing as Prince John from Robin Hood, trying to collect money, um, so on and so forth. Um, but you stay within your own board, your own world. So each player is sort of playing their own game, um, unless the player plays a fate card, but they're playing the fate card that goes with that character. So if you're playing Gaston, they're going to play cards, you're going to get stuff like Beast or Bell. Uh, if you're playing, um, trying to think, like Aladdin, you're going to get like, if you're playing Jafar, you're going to get like Aladdin and Jasmine. Um, but they stay on your side of the board. You don't actually affect the other player's play field. Other than playing cards from that character specific deck. Marvel though works on a different thing. Um, because there's not just like Loki didn't do just one thing. Or he doesn't interact with just one type of hero or whatever. There's always crossovers with everybody. Um, so when you play either the base game uh, with like Thanos and Ultron. Uh, and Taskmaster, or if you're playing the new, this new one here, um, which again is a standalone one, you actually, you're doing your own thing, but lots of times it's going to involve you moving some of your cards, uh, or pieces to another player's board, um, or trying to pull something from their board back to your board, um, the fate cards, uh, it's a centralized deck, so when you go to use one, you can target any player, um, but some cards will work better versus some players so each villain has their own different deck which we'll look at um they have their own couple of cards but then there's also like the general pool um so that way if you're playing you mix you take the general pool you mix the specific villain deck in there um then that way when you're doing something you might actually you can kind of pick up you can kind of decide who you want to attack with that versus specifically picking a care another player and kind of say, like, oh, what card would that hurt the most versus I just want to target that person. Um, all right, and what, does, what I mean by this as a standalone is because it comes with three characters. Um, I'm trying to tip everything out of the box. So we're going to get Madame Mystique, Loki, and Modoc. So you can buy this box. You can play the entire game with just this box. It's a three-player game. Uh, or if you bought the previous base game. Uh, which has five characters, you can play that by itself. Or if you bought both, you can mix and match. So someone can play Loki, someone can play Thanos, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, and that's what makes these villainous games really fun. Um, as you can, as more expansions come out, you can keep mixing and matching the characters. So every player can pick whoever their favorite character or whoever they want to try out is. And the Disney game's the same way. And there's like four expansions for the Disney uh, so you can just pick up one box if you just really like the characters in this. So if you just really want to play as Loki, you could buy this and just play as Loki. Um, and you don't have to buy the rest of the base game if you don't want to. Uh, but hopefully they'll keep releasing more of these. Um, so a couple of things to note is that uh, the tokens on here, which are really cool. Um, this one here is a green one for Loki. I have a special one. So we're actually going to flip the up of my box. So I actually have... The Target exclusive version, which is the Jotunheim version. So, um, all these tokens are really cool because they're trying to, like, 
simplify the concept of the character and a little coaching. You can kind of see you got a little, you got a little cape. You got Corsa's helmet with his horns. And then on the back here you have his scepter. Uh, kind of like his iconic things. But yeah, you get a frost blue one if you get the Target exclusive version. That's the only thing that's different in the Target one. Um, every other part of the game is the exact same. Um, it's just this token that moves around. So if you buy the regular version from anywhere else, you're going to get a green one instead of the blue one. But otherwise, they don't do anything different in the game. They're, they're your movers for uh, part of the game field. Um, then we have Modok here, who you can't do much to simplify Modok. He's a big giant head. Uh, he's got like a cloudburst blast below him. Uh, but still, looks really cool. And we have Madame Mystique, who has her signature mask. Uh, then she has some dual pistol on the back. And then she has like a belt here pouch on the bottom. Because she's uh, sort of like a spy type of thing. She's really cool. Uh, Alright, so let's jump in and look at some of the stuff we're going to get here. So, like I do with all games, I like to go through the book really quickly. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. But I do love these books. They're some of the best instruction manuals I've read. Um, so here's all your stuff that it comes with. Uh, here's It's actually like set up here. It's explaining what each different part of the setup is. What you do. What you do there. Multiple players. Um, game overview. Like okay. So after you've started a game. This is what your field could look like. Which is real, I, I love that too. Like I love the fact that it's just. Here's a setup. So this is what. The game, all right, here's all your pieces. Here's what the game should look like when you first start. Here's what it's going to look like, you know, seven turns into the game. Okay, well, that makes it. So now I know exactly how heroes go. They go here. I know, okay, that's where those guys go. If I get multiple, um, you know, I love that. It's a thing. Uh, and then, like, here's, again, another mid-game example. Oh, literally showing, again, if I'm playing in the middle of the game, this is stuff that could be happening. Card could go there. Villain card's there. Um, specifies what you can do on your turn. Uh, so you get action, you can move, perform actions, draw cards. And then it actually breaks down every single type of action. So they have little symbols on cards and on the boards. Which say what you can do. It specifies specifically what each one does, how they work. So you'll play a card, so you, go, oh, you just pick a card and you play it. And it's telling you exactly how to play it, where to play it. How to use activates, how to use relocates, vanquish actions, fate actions, discard. Uh, and then you just, you know, it goes through types of cards. Oh, here's the difference between your types of cards. So what strength means for different cards, how tokens work. Uh, here's how all the fate cards actually work. Special event cards, which event cards are exclusive to Marvel. They're not in the Disney one because, again, they share everything. Uh, and then we finally have just card actions as a quick one if you want to remember what each term means. And then here it actually mentions if you want to get the villainous infinite power, which is Thanos, Hela, Ultron, Killmonger, Taskmaster, how they all mix together. So one thing that the villainous game is kind of doing, mirroring sort of what the Disney game did, was Disney always had like one major, like one super major character in expansion, um, like one, like one, like secondary or also large character. Then the third character is always kind of like a deeper cut. Um, so like they were like even in the base set, like they had Prince John from Robin Hood, which I'd say like yeah, there's a lot of people that know Robin Hood, but he's not like one of the top ten Disney villains you would name. Um, but then they'd have like uh, I can't remember, but like the one set has Ragadin in it from the Great Mouse Detective. Um, or the newest set had, uh, oh, I can't think of his name, from, the, uh, the Horn King from the Black Cauldron. And it's like they're deeper cut characters, so they're not ones that everybody knows, but they're still Disney villains, which is really cool. Like, you might buy the set for Hades, and you might buy it for Scar or Gaston, but you're getting these other deeper cut characters, which is really cool. Uh, like Steamboat Willie, or like Pete from Steamboat Willie. Um, and Marvel kind of did the same thing, and they're kind of following their movies as well. So, like, clearly Thanos and Ultron were two of the big bad Avenger villains. 
Um, and then Hela and Killmonger were in, you know, Thor and Black Panther, respectively. So, again, people probably know from that. Most people were probably like, well, I'm not sure who Taskmaster was. But at the time this game came out, it's when the Black Widow movie should have been coming out. So, it would have tied, uh, tied into that. So, people would have saw Black Widow roughly about the time this came out. But it got delayed because of the pandemic stuff. Um, but then they'd be like, oh, that's who Taskmaster is. And that's sort of the idea there. He wasn't a commonly known villain for people who watch the movies and stuff. Um, and that's sort of the same thing with this one. Is everyone's going to know who Loki is. Because clearly Avengers and Loki TV series and everything. And this actually kind of ties into the TV series a little bit. Which is really cool. Um, and then Modoc has become more popular with the uh, Avengers video game. Because he's the main villain on there. Plus he has his own little... Uh, animated TV series right now. Uh, so he's gaining popularity. And then people are like, well, who's Madame Mystique? Um, like, again, she's not a super popular, like, movie character. But she's coming out in, I believe she's in the Hawkeye TV show or movie that's coming out. I believe she's the main villain or one of the villains in there. Uh, so that's where they kind of tied that in. They're kind of like, you get this now, you might not know who that is, but, oh, like, when that, when that Hawkeye show, you're going to know who that is now all of a sudden, and you're going to have some reference. So that's, that's really neat, too. Um, so let's look at some other stuff here. Yeah, I'm going to keep rambling about everything. So all the characters have boards here. So we have Loki, Fire and Chaos are coming. I am the Lord of Chaos. So they'll get their special boards here, and this is basically your play field. So, it'll say Loki of his objective. Uh, to gain and spend 10 mischief. Every character has their different objectives. They have four locations. Odin's Throne, Bifrost, Jotunheim, and Sanctum Sanctorum. And then they have a spot for the specialty cards. This is also one thing that's different than the Disney one. Because these characters have specialty cards. That they get put down and grant them like permanent abilities. Um, whereas the Disney ones have conditions. Uh, which... Depending on what other players do, they get a play card for free. So it's kind of a interesting difference. Otherwise, the base thing is the same. There's all the different symbols. So every turn... So if I'm playing my board down. Every turn, start your turn, you have to move to a new location. Then you can use one of the different actions. So like, my next turn, I can move either back to this one I just at. Or I can move to one of the other two. You just can't stay on the same one. So you kind of got to plan a little bit because you have to move to different spots. Um, and some of them might require it for what you're trying to do or the different actions. Um, so like you move to this one, you get three power, which is your basically your currency. Uh, you get to play a card. You can move a card and you can, act, you can activate your ability. Um, you can discard cards, which is helpful to refill your hand. Oh, I got cards I can't use. Either they cost too much. Or they have specific effects that don't help me right now. Discard them. Draw new cards. Get through your deck quicker. Again, play a card. More more money. Uh, do the fate deck. Try to attack another player. Uh, he gets another fate. Draw. And here you get to play two cards. It's a good one. Or a vanquish action. Which lets you defeat heroes at your location. Um, and then you know more of the same. And not every hero. Or every villain rather. Is going to have the exact same. Um, numbers, like for power, they're not going to have the same item. You might get one of these characters that doesn't have a vanquish action. You might get one that doesn't have, um, a move action or an activate. It just depends on what their various decks do. Um, that also makes the game unique. Because it's not like every character has the same board. They're all different and they all do different things. Uh, you can see this outline here. So when someone does play a hero against you, they put them on there and it covers up these spots. And that's the thing why the heroes and the fate decks really make the game more unique and interesting. Because you're trying to do your thing here, and the opponent's like, oh, I'm going to play, you know, Thor here. And now you can't get this three power anymore unless you spend time, either you have to just ignore it and not have, have the option of using these, which makes the space a lot less, a lot less reason to go there. Or, you're going to try and defeat them as quickly as possible so you can get them spaces back. Um, yeah, so it's pretty cool. Uh, and then you can kind of see in all these different areas. Uh, like, Sanctum Sanctorum was actually pretty cool. They put him in there. I like that. 
kind of nodes to uh, different things, and you'll see some of it when we get to his death. So, Madame Mystique is, uh, or Mask, I guess, probably, probably Madame Mask. I keep saying Miss, <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, there's nothing sadder than a broken superhero, and by sadder, I mean more delightful. Um, she's like a crime, crime, crime lord. Um, vanquish eight heroes to settle her vendetta. So she has Manhattan, and you see she has different, different icons for hers. Um, she has a couple of different moves. Uh, Hell's Kitchen, which is where Daredevil usually hangs out. Nefaria Castle and the Magia Casino Ship. Uh, so Nefaria is a bunch of villains and Magia are like, uh, mobsters. And she's got her specialty spot. Because she has, it mentions a Vendetta board. And let's look at that quick as long as we're talking about it. So she's going to get this special card here. Called the Vendetta board. There's going to be a little clip you can put on there to keep track of it. So she has all eight. Just so you don't have to try and remember how many heroes you've beaten. Uh, and then she has a special activate ability with it. So if, it, if Vendetta is at zero to three... Gain two power. If it has four to seven, gain one power and a villain card. So basically, the better you do, you can actually use this ability to gain extra effects each turn. So that's kind of cool. That's like a unique card for her deck. It'll kind of sit out separate. And then we got Modok. Add to my to do list. Violently eliminate all hostile co workers and restore the self controlling power at aim. His objective is to activate the Cosmic Cube. So he's going to have AIM Laboratories, AIM Island, AIM S Submarine, and the AIM Warehouse. And he's like, one of his only has one. Um, and does he, uh, I don't think he has a, yeah, he's one Vanquish, like Loki had two. So a couple different things there. Um, and he also has a special... Uh, tracker. So he gets a loyalty tracker. So it'll be this, and he'll have a little coin so you can track up to five loyalty. Uh, and there's various cards in his deck that will use that. And a little picture of him on the back to just keep in mind that's who it is. So we're also going to get a bunch of tokens here. We'll look at those quick before we get to the cards. We'll get to the cards. We'll get in there. So we have a bunch of different tokens. We have these ones, which are your, these are Loki's Mischief Coins, which is why they're green. Um, in the base game, Hela had similar things. She had some. We have counters for plus one and minus one. So this way, if you're messing with the heroes that are on your boards, their, their strength, um, it's a quick way to keep track of that versus having to try and remember. Um... So you get a bunch of each of those. You get these black and white ones here. These are your power tokens based for your money. And then we have a Modoc coin hiding in here. Let's see if I can dig that out. And then we have a Modoc coin just to keep track on that tracker here. Keep track of his loyalty. Alright, so two other quick things and we'll jump to the cards. Uh, you get these cool little reference cards. Just remind you of what the symbols do. Uh, so if you see them, you're like, oh yeah, that's what those do. And on the back of each one, they give you quick objectives. So Loki must earn and spend 10 mischief tokens. Well, you can always collect mischief in various ways. The most common way is by placing multiverse personalities in other villains' domains. And I'm talking about interacting with other characters. Uh, mischief is generated by these multiverse personalities' ongoing effects. Um... Modok must activate the Cosmic Cube. To do so, Modok must play the Creating the Cube specialty card as well as a Cosmic Cube item. When these cards are in play, Modok loyalty at 5, he may activate the Cosmic Cube. So he's got a couple different objectives there. And Madame Mask must make 8 Vendetta Vanquish actions before any Vanquish action. Uh, Madame Mask must declare whether she is vanquishing for a contract or her Vendetta. A contract Vanquish earns power. One of the few ways she can gain power. And the data counts as towards victory. No, if a vanquish type is not declared before action, then it is a contract by default. So that's kind of a neat thing is you have to pick and choose. So you get these three, one for each player or card. 
Um, but like, yeah, on the back, they just have quick reminders. So that way, if you're like, wait, how does that person wing? A little bit more detailed. Then finally, if we want even more detailed, they give you these awesome little villain guidebooks. Um, like, I'm not going to sit here and read through it, but so like motives. MODOT's objective explains what he has to do, how to set up the loyalty. Um, like, here's some good cards that really work with that. Here's how you do that. Dealing with heroes, here's how you deal with heroes. Um, some more, what infinite calculations, what that can do for you. Um, some of his unique fate cards that are specific to him and how they might hurt him or what you need to do against them. Uh, so it's kind of neat. Uh, to give you little guides for each character, so that way, like, oh, it's my first time playing as this character. Especially, like, when you get Disney, I think they got, like, 10 or 12 different characters or more. You can pick up this little book, and you can do a quick read-through on what am I looking for to do. So, uh, here's the she always just to go first, which is kind of interesting. Uh, making your choices. Here's different ways to gain power. Um... Long distance vanquish actions. So not her unique fate cards. This is like here's some specific things they might do. And then we got Loki's. Uh, Loki's objective says unused and spent. Put them on there. Uh, multiverse cards. So have a special uh, card type. Uh, here's some of those other special characters or allies. And then some of his unique fate cards and what they do to him. So yeah, it's just a quick thing of things to watch out for or to pay attention or that in their decks or when you're playing as them. So I want to look at her board again. Yeah, that's actually crazy. So look at this. I didn't realize that until I mentioned it. She has none with the numbers on there. So she actually can't gain... Um, any power every turn to play it. So that's one thing that makes her board definitely unique. So like her to gain money to spend cards, she has to play specific cards to do that. So that's definitely a different thing. Um, so let's hop in and look at some of these cards. Alright, one thing that's really neat about all their cards is on the back, they'll have their own different backers on there. Uh, which will have different things representing them. So like here's as a mash, as a gun, she has money piling up. Um, how it's like buildings and stuff, just really neat, and then a little symbol on the outside. Uh, that's just a quick way you can tell whose deck is whose, and then the color kind of matches their icon. So, up here is going to be your cost, how much it spends to cost. Down here is the strength. So, if they need to defeat uh, another hero, that's just how much power, how many points they have. Uh, they have all the different subtypes in different colors, so like allies are always red, effects are always green, items are always blue. Uh, just really simple, quick ways, if you're trying to figure out what you need to do, that's what they do. So here we have the Neferia Family Thugs. When Madam Mask gains one power, she moves to this location. Oh, Madam Mask gains one power when she moves to the location at the start of her turn if it is controlled. So if she moves to these guys, she immediately gains them. And you're going to get four of them in the deck. You start off with like, I think like two or three powers. So and she, and since she always starts off first, um, she's going to start with less power than everybody else too. It kind of sucks. Um, so then we have the Neferia family soldiers. Uh, she gains two power when she moves to this location at the start of her turn, if it is controlled. And she has three of those. She gets one of the Nefer Neferia family leaders. She gains three power when she moves to this controlled location, if it's controlled. So there's different ways she gains there. She's actually going to get Count Neferia, big evil villain. Uh, so she can activate to pay, and pay two power. Reveal a card from the faint deck until you reveal a hero, which is an orange. Play that hero to count the various location. So she can get a, get a hero out with this ability. She can spend some points. Count the fairy can basically like like pull a hero out to come attack him, and then now she has a way to like go after them. We can also get the hood. Uh Robbie Parker, I believe. Uh he costs four, so he costs quite a bit. Um 
It said the hood can only be used for contract vanquish action. When you use a vanquish action, you gain power equal to twice the hero strength of the vanquished hero. So the bigger the hero you can take out, the more power you can gain. And then he also probably works well with the Syndicate. Um, the Syndicate is played relocate all heroes in Mega Mass Domain to this location. To get everybody together and then you can try to take them out with one big action. And they got four. So we have our first item. So items are in blue. And you see heroes are in orange. So when we get to a hero card you know what color they are. It just helps uh, make the game quicker if you're looking for a specific card. So we got two copies of Dreadnoughts, which have minus two uh, strength. So they cost two. It says, playing attacks Dreadnoughts to a hero in another player's domain. This is where you're messing with the other player. That hero loses two strength, and when it's defeated by any villain, counts as a contract vanquished by Maga Mask. So you can send these guys to attack other heroes. Um, sort of to help them out and be like, hey, let me send these guys to help you defeat that person. And then you do, I gain a bonus for it. Um, she has tools of the trade. When play attacks tool of the trade to a target ally you control, that ally gains two strength and cannot be used on contract of vanquish actions. Uh, she gains them a bonus, but they can't be used for the contract, only for the vendetta. We're going to get three copies of decoy. Uh, when an ally is using a vanquish action is the same location as decoy, it is returned to bag of mask location, decoy is discarded. Um, so the reason for this is when you use a vanquish action, so if like one of my Count Nefaria or one of my thugs vanquishes one of the heroes, let's say they're, let's see, so we got Hawkeye here. Um, so they spend two, they need was two points to beat him. If they have two, they beat him. Whoever's used in the vanquish action is also discarded, so you can't even if you have a lot more power. Uh, so this is kind of a really helpful one. Because I need to keep them guys out to keep using them. So you have two copies of an effect card. Which are green. So these are like one time use cards. Uh, allies stay in play. Items generally stay in play. They sometimes attach to a character. Sometimes don't. Uh, effects are usually just one time. Use them. They go away. To gain a vanquish action. You may target any... Any hero in any domain other than yours, which is Vanquish action. So that's actually kind of cool, is that you're actually taking out characters or heroes in other locations. And that's when Dreadnought can actually be helpful too. Send them over to Loki's domain, and then she can snipe them with this card and take them out. Setting a trap. Uh, relocate any hero in another villain's domain to any location in your domain. Pull a weak hero to your spot. Take them out. Um, and that can maybe mess up somebody else if they need a specific hero out to win. So escape plan. Uh, this one costs zero. So re relocate any hero from your location to any other domain. Oh crap, I, I need to get rid of Hawkeye because he's blocking my good thing. Shove him over, have him go fight Loki for a while. You know, definitely, like, I love the little, kind of like the fun thing of messing with people. Two copies of On the Hunt. Relocate any ally you control to any of, any Madame Mystique's hero, with a hero. So that way you can move your heroes around for free. Got three copies of No Mercy. Uh... Gain a Vanquish action. The hero is defeated by this Vanquish action. Comes to their contract. And towards Magum Master and Gaga sticks both. Nice. Gain some power and good. So then we have our specialty cards. So when you play these, they go on that side of the board. And you gain basically a permanent effect. So it says, Payday. When collecting power from a contract, gain one power. So that helps. So the quicker you get that out, the more power you can gain. And it says, Call me Big M. When collecting power from a control location, gain two power. So that's definitely cool there. There's this little book to explain. Okay. So for a location to be controlled, a nefarious family ally must be played there, and no heroes may be present. Melee gains power when she moves to a control location at the start of her turn. Each nefarious family ally will call power at their location. So there we go. So that's how you have a controlled one. 
And the thing is, it's, uh, she, since she has to move there, you could technically send them to another person's location, and they would be controlled, but, uh, it doesn't really help you, because you can't move to other players' locations. Then we have the ally, or the fake cards. The fake cards are about some generic hero symbols on the back of Iron Man, Hulk, Captain America, Thor, Captain Marvel, uh, Hourglass here for Black Widow, Shield Icon, and then Guardian Icon. Um, so in the villains that in the Disney Disney version, the backs of these cards are the exact same as your uh, as your villain, because they only go with that deck. These ones have a generic one, so you can mix them all together. So then, if we look at these, we're gonna jump in. We're gonna have heroes we're gonna have to fight, which are gonna have the orange. They're gonna have a little tiny symbol on the bottom that shows that hero. So it's just the same. So if um, I'm playing uh, this card and I draw. Uh, Clint Barton Hawkeye from the Fate deck. I can play this against anybody. I could play this against uh, Madam Mask, or I could play it against Modoc or, or Loki if I want. Um, but showing that it has her symbol means it's probably going to do the most damage to her. But there might be reasons um, why you want to play against somebody else. Because he says, one played targeted villain must discard any ally cards in their hand. Uh, so maybe for... Like, Loki has allies in his hand that he might want to. So you might want to get rid of his. It just depends on who you're playing. Um, but it really is going to hurt her. Because if you get rid of her allies, she has no way of gaining power. Uh, Kate Bishop Hawkeye. Uh, while I'm playing the villain of this domain, cannot play effect cards. Madam Mask gains an additional one Vendetta and one power from defeating Kate Bishop. So this one goes specifically with her. So you play against anybody else, um, it might not do anything. But also the fact, though, that even if you play against Loki, Mara Mask has a way to shoot people in other domains. So she can still gain that bonus. Uh, we have Black Widow for Shield. So some of these guys, they have like the subtype, like Hawkeye, just to show the two different versions, or Shield. It's also because in the first set, uh, there was like Black Widow and Hawkeye. And it's just giving them the subtypes um, for one reason, so that you can differentiate who they are. And secondly, because now they have cards that are going to start referring to those types. Uh, one play, draw another fake card, and play that card in the same villain you just played this card on. Oh boy, that's brutal. Jasper Sitwell, shield. One play, find a card with Iron Man in its name, and play that card in its location. If defeated by Madam Mask, she gains no power or vendetta. So here we have an Iron Man. So if you're just playing this set, um, you have an Iron Man no matter what. But now if you play with MODOK, he also has an Iron Man. And if you're using the base game, there's an Iron Man in that set too. So you actually have three, potentially three different options for Iron Man if you start mixing all the different stuff together. Um, otherwise, if you're just playing with her and you're not using the other, like MODOK or the base game, like just her and Loki, you're not going to have as many Iron Man. Uh, Iron, Tony Stark, Iron Man gains plus 5 strength when Maga Masks in Maga Mask domain. Cannot win the game when he's in her domain. So you can want to try and move him away or defeat him. He only has 1 strength, but he gains 6 if he's in his wheelchair. Up to 6 there. We have Moon Knight. Uh, all allies at Moon Knight's location lose 1 strength. Make them a lot weaker. We do get effect cards. We have 1 copy of Failure. Target villain reveals the top five cards of the villain deck. Place all five cards in their discard pile. Oh boy. Uh, hard to trust a mask. All allies controlled by target villain receive minus one strength. Which doesn't defeat them if they hit zero. But it does mean that um, they can't do anything. Prisoner of Shields. We get two copies of that. Remove the ally with the highest current strength from the target villain's domain. And then we get one event to be. Ooh. So we got the syndicate fighting some shield agents. No one gets out alive. Madam Mask cannot take a Vendetta Vanquish action, but it costs it's six to beat. If you beat it though, you gain one Vendetta and three power. Um, and these ones are really fun. The events are kind of neat because you can keep them or take them out if you don't want. Like, if you want an easier game, just take them out. Don't use them. Otherwise, uh, they go out in the main field and they affect everybody. Uh, but clearly, this one's only going to hurt her. 
Um, but someone else could help you defeat it if they really wanted to. Alright, let's see what Modok has in store for us. Mental organism designed only for killing. To the back of Modok's card. We're going to have like Modok in his chair. A little crystal there. He's got a cube where he's trying to create, create a cosmic cube and some uh, tech there. I mean, these aren't as, I guess, as interesting as the... Uh, like Disney ones, where they're trying to use a bunch of different things, but they're still neat. So we're going to get four copies of AIM Soldiers. This is some basic troopers that have no extra abilities. Just give you two attack. Three copies of the AIM Scientist. If AIM Scientist is used in a vanquish action, you lose one loyalty. Um, so you could use them to defeat people, but then you're going to lose your loyalty because they're scientists. So they don't want to fight. Use your soldiers to fight. Let your scientists do science. Uh, aim Scientist Supreme. When Scientist Supreme is in played, all other allies with aim in their name in your domain gain plus one strength. At the start of your turn, if there are fewer than three aim allies in play, lose one loyalty. Uh, so basically, yeah, they get stronger, but you don't want to lose them. Because you need that five loyalty to win. We have the leader. Um, when leader is in play, all of Modoc's villain cards cost one less to play. The Super Adaptoid, which can mimic hero's abilities. When Super Adaptoid is used to a vanquish action, he gains his strength equal to the hero being vanquished. So he's always going to have the hero's plus one. Um, so that's actually kind of neat. Uh, we have an item. We have the Cosmic Cube, of course. Which costs 6 to play. When Cosmic Cube is played, gain 1 loyalty. Uh, you can use an activate ability to win the game. It can only be activated if the loyalty is at 5 and creating the cube is in play. So even though you get it in play, it's like... Like someone's like, oh, he finally played that. Oh crap, I'm going to lose. He, he still has to have those other two conditions. And then he still has to go to a vanquish action. So he can't play it... Um... He can, he can potentially play it and win if he has the other two in there, but if he doesn't have everything. So we have some effects here. We have three copies, or sorry, four copies of Psionic Blast. Target any hero in your domain. Place a number of minus one strength tokens equal to that hero strength on that token. So if they get down to zero, you can beat them for free. Um, but it's still going to cost you one of your guys. But that's nice. You can use like a one or two guy to take down like the Hulk or Thor. Um, if you get enough minus counters on them. We have three copies of Aim Attack. Reveal cards from your villain deck until an ally is revealed. Play that ally immediately for no cost. Great way to get some of the big cards out. Um, three copies of Hail Modok. If you have four or more allies with Aim in the game, in play gain one loyalty. Three copies of Modok Superior. Remove both a hero and an ally from your domain. Lose one loyalty. So basically sacrifice an ally to get rid of a hero. But you lose some loyalty. But sometimes that's, you know, like one loyalty is better lost than uh, having to deal with someone covering up one of your spots. Three copies of Infinite Calculations. Uh, when you play Infinite Calculations, you may uncover, take any uncovered action in your domain. So that's actually really cool. So you can take a free action wherever you need it. So you can play that card. Um, and you could be on this spot over here. And then you could be like, oh, I'm going to get three extra thing. Or you could be here and you could be like, I really need to use a Vanquish action. Or I need to just play another card. Um... Or discard or whatever. So that's really cool that you get like a free action on another spot. And he has a couple specialty cards. So we have calculate probability. Activate. <clears throat> you may discard any number of cards from your hand. Draw cards equal to the number you discarded. So you can land on a discard spot. 
and you can actually discard cards. And at the end of your turn, you get to draw that many. So if you discarded three of your cards, you get to draw back up to your hand size. This is essentially the same thing, except you get to do it during your turn. So you get to discard, draw, and then you can still play those cards. Uh, creating the cube. Uh, you can spend that to pay pay three power to gain one loyalty. You may activate uh, creating the cube as long as you have at least one ally with a scientist in, in your name or leader in play. Uh, so you gotta spend some, but you can gain loyalty quick. And then captured. Activate. She has a lot of activate abilities. Place a zero strength hero in your domain on this card. Lose one loyalty. This hero is no longer in any domain and their ability is no longer active. At the start of your turn, if a hero is set is here, set their strength to one and place that hero in any other domain. Oh, okay. I was like, I don't think there's any heroes that have zero. You drop them down with them other cards, and then you can uh you can uh get rid of them, and then you can like shovel them somewhere else for a turn. And then if you drop them down, you can capture them again. That's actually pretty cool. All right, then let's look at his vil his uh his villains, his heroes. Uh, Iron Man, Silver Centurion. You must use two or more allies in a vanquish action against Iron Man. So this is the ones that have a little Modoc symbol. But yeah, I mean, you have to use two characters at least because a lot. If you figured, he's fighting out against just the Modoc deck. Lots of them are aim soldiers, and one aim soldier scientist shouldn't be able to take on Iron Man. Oh, but maybe two can. One distracts him, one shoots him. We have Captain America, the Avenger. He has a defend ability, which means you have to defeat him first. When played, any heroes already in play at the Avengers in their name gain one strength. She Hulk Avenger. All your ally, all your ally costs cost plus one power to play with She Hulk is in your domain. You have Captain America. She also has seven. We have Hulk, who has a really interesting ability. Um, so Hulk Avenger. When when played, turn Hulk Avenger horizontal. So that he covers three action spaces. When vanquished the first time, turn vertical so he covers only two spaces in one location. Uh, after after disc, discard after the second vanquish action. So it's actually crazy. So when you play him, you turn him sideways. So we bring our board back out. So you first play him. Instead of putting him like this and just covering that, you put him like this. He covers a third one. So you actually get a little bit of lead. And then you beat him the first time. Oh, you beat Hulk. Oh, now he's ready to fight again. Now you're only covering the two. So you have to... Now you have to beat him twice. But he also covers up extra actions. Which makes it harder for you to do stuff. Um, so you're at least going to probably want to defeat him that first time. Just so you can gain at least one of those spaces back. Here we have three copies of Traitor. So remove an ally from... The targeted villain domain. If Mogok is a targeted villain, he also loses two loyalty. You can see where that could be definitely helpful to hurt Mogok, but why you might use it against other players. Three copies of Powerless. Moving item from targeted villain's domain. If Mogok is a targeted, also set his loyalty to one. So if he has that cosmic cube out, you draw one of these, boom, it returns it, drops his loyalty to one. Now you just mess with two of his biggest things he needs to do to win. And this guy's probably going to hate you and come after you. Um, and then aim revolt. Loyalty is set to 1 and cannot advance. Reward. Loyalty is set to 5. So if you lose this, you get this out. Basically, you can't win until you get rid of it. But once you do, boom. You hit 8, you can beat this. And then you're ready to go. Alright. And then we have Loki. Loki. I love Loki's back of his card. He's got his typical crown, got his broken crown, kid Loki crown, scepter, throne of Asgard, a uh, little mischief token symbols up at the top. All right, let's see what he brings. So we got a specialty right away. For some reason, it got mixed in there, but we're just going to go with it. Uh, the most brilliant guest says Throg. Uh, activate, you spend one mischief, which is what he needs to do. Place a minus one strength token equal. To their strength on a hero any on a hero in any domain. So you can weaken anybody anywhere. 
He's got some effects here. He's got four copies. Power of a God. Uh, spend a number of mischief tokens equal to the strength of a hero in any domain. Remove that hero and any equal or lesser strength allies of that same domain. So that means you can definitely, again, you can mess up people when they're doing stuff. Like all these villains, they don't need any specific ones, but some some of them do. Like I know the, I'm not sure if the any of the Marvel ones do yet, but like in the Disney one, like, um, like Jafar, you need to have Genie out, um, or Scar, you need to get Mufasa out. So sometimes you don't want to fate people for that reason. And this I could kind of see the same thing as you can kind of mess with them and be like. Oh wait, they need to have this specific specific character out to do something. Um, they might come across someone that needs a villain, like they need to defeat like this specific villain. Um, and then you're like, no, I don't want to let him do that. She can eliminate him for them. So that, that way, oh, you can't defeat him now. Uh, she have another specialty. Who's the tricky one? Activate. Pay power equal to the number of multiverse cards in play, then gain that much mischief. So you can gain mischief pretty quick. Um, and we'll check the multiverse cards are when we get to them. So you have four copies of games within games. So spend two mischief. Uh, you may relocate either a new domain. You may either relocate any multiverse card to either a new domain or a new location in the same direction. Uh, and remove it from playing your discard pile. Uh, so it's kind of cool to move guys around. Um, other thing I love about this, this game, it's all brand new artwork. They could have, like, taken artwork from the comic books and stuff. They made brand new artwork for everything. So you have four copies of Trust Me. Pay two power to gain one mischief, or spend one mischief to gain two power. Back and forth, depending on how you need it. We got Item, the Scepter of Asgard. Attach Scepter of Asgard to the... To an ally, ally gains plus two strength. Simple as that. We have another item for the destroyer. Uh, you may relocate the destroyer to another other player's domain as a hero. Fate card with a protector ability. When this card is defeated. Loki gains three mischief. So that's actually neat because you can play him for four strength. Um, so you play him on your spot or whatever, but you can then move him to somewhere else. And then he becomes a hero fate card. So maybe you mess up people that way. Alright, so I already get multiverse. So they're red. So they're considered allies because they're still red. But their special type being multiverse. So we have Lady Loki. Uh, when the villain... When the villain whose domain Lady Loki is in fills their hand, they must take cards from their discard pile and anger their villain deck. Loki gains one mischief for each card taken from the discard pile. So that's kind of neat. So it get so it's kind of like you can benefit people, but also hurt them at the same time. Because you're like, well, you know what? Here's an option. You can take some cards from your discard pile. So you may have played something that you really need, or you lost something. Like someone discarded the Cosmic Cube for Modoc. You really can get it back from that way, so you can draw from that way. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of neat. So they can do that. But then every time they do, you gain more mischief, which is what you need to win. So it's also a gamble for them. Uh, Sorcerer Supreme Loki. When taking a fate action, the villain whose domain Sorcerer Supreme Loki is played to draws three fate cards. Plays one, discards the other. Loki gains one mischief each time that villain takes a fate action. So again, you can, uh, hey, guess what? You can draw three fate cards. Use however you want. But every time you do, I gain one of my mischief cards. So, and then they can kind of be like, well, do I hurt him though? Because I'm gaining cards. But then like, eh. Uh, we have Viking Loki. If the villain who's got main Viking Loki is played and moves, moves to Vi Viking Loki's location, all allies they control gain one strength. One of Loki's allies gains one strength. Um, and Loki gains two mischief. All allies they control gain one strength. One of Loki's allies gains one strength. And Loki gains two mischief. So he gained one strength. Um, I like these cards. They're kind of fun. Because they kind of mess up things a little bit. We have King Loki. When King Loki is the villain's domain, allies removed due to a vanquished action are returned to that villain's hand. Uh,